Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to my channel. In this one, I'm going to be going through just a bunch of stuff that I recently got. These are all um, books, RPG books, that I wanted to... I haven't done a haul in a while, and show you just what I've been picking up recently. Now, all of these, well, all of these but one, are things that I've reviewed on this channel, but in PDF form. And I finally got a bunch of the physical copies of these things, and I wanted to show them off, because, you know, the physical construction... It's a, it's a serious consideration if you're going to buy it in print or you know, PDF or whatever. So I want to show you guys some of these I'm very impressed with. Really, really happy with them. Uh, one of them I actually haven't reviewed at all. I'll flip through it at some point. But Dragonbane, which is what I got. <laughs> so Dragonbane Beastiery. It's just, you know, it's not something that seems to be connecting with a lot of people. So I don't know if I'll actually release a review of it. But I really like it. And I, I think it's worth flipping through, and, and the, the art in it is great, so I'll show that. What I have are two uh, the Adventure Anthologies by Old School Essentials. These just came out. I kickstarted the big box set, and I got the stretch goals, or I think it was stretch goals if they were just part of the, the tier at which I backed. Um, I got these in PDF, and then they gave me a discount code, which was awesome and unexpected for me. Uh, maybe it was in there, but I didn't know that I was going to get it. A discount code for the actual books in physical form. So I got them. And I'll go through these. There's two of them. They're Old School Essentials Adventure Anthologies. And again, I've reviewed them before on this channel. Then I got Crown and Skull, Volume 1, the physical version of this. This is one that I am super, super impressed by. I'm going to show you guys that in a minute here. Uh, Dragonbane, the bestiary, which, again, the art of Dragonbane is fantastic. I, I always love the art of this book. And I'll show you guys that in a bit, too. The Dragon Slayer book, which is, uh, you know, again, I've reviewed it. It's beautiful, such a great book. Physical quality is what you would expect from a print-on-demand, but I'm really grateful to have this. <laughs> and it's, it's such a cool book to have on my shelf. It's heavy, which I love. And then I got it. I got the Monster Overhaul, the physical version. I got it on, I think it's Indie Revolution Press or Indie Press Revolution or whatever it was. I can put a link below to where you guys can get this because... Oh my goodness, this book is so much cooler than I thought it was going to be. I was expecting a little book. Like, I thought it was going to be, seriously, I don't know why, like like that big. And I can't even really do it. Like, something like that. You know, just much smaller. I, I didn't look at the dimensions of it when I bought it. I just needed it. I was like, oh man, I really want to get that. But this book is solid, beautiful construction. I'll get into it in a minute. So I'll, I'll show you guys what that one is, too. I think I'll save that one for last, just because it's so good. <laughs> um, but I'll, I'll start off with these adventure anthologies. Adventure Anthology 1 and 2 by Old School Essentials. Now these, again, are something I've reviewed before, but the quality of the books is exactly what you would expect and in terms of it's very high from Necrotic Gnome and from, I got it from uh, the uh, Exalted Funeral. It's where they, they shipped it. And they were super good about the speed at which they delivered it, the notifications throughout the process. Very, very pleased with that whole bit. Uh, books are slightly glossy cover, uh, hardbound, obviously great piece of art there on the back that's also inside adventure anthology one and it's, it's what you would expect again uh, great maps on the front cover for two of the adventures and maps on the back cover for two more of the adventures there are four adventures in this book so you've got them all right away when you need them if you're going to run them at the table and then great art throughout these little books the jeweler's sanctum which i've run it's a fantastic dungeon super fun I ran through it into my West Marches world, and they players ran through it in the night. They're really cool, really flavorful, a lot of fun stuff to do in here. I like this one a lot, the Jeweler's Sanctum. And then the art in this book is fantastic, but the formatting is exactly what you'd expect from Old School Essentials at this point. Top of the line, everything's very clear. There's great art throughout, beautiful book, great construction. I think I'm not going to go through it in too much detail because, again, I have that video up, but these have all of the complete uh, pieces of art. And all the complete maps, all the complete entries, stat blocks, magic items, everything you would need to run it. I like this one too. I want to run the Curse of the Maggot God in one of my... And the Sunbathers. I think this is a super cool adventure. Uh, an island... You'd be great in an island hopping campaign or something like that. Really like it. Really, really a big fan of this one. And then the last one you get is something that I also really like. I think this first... <laughs> volume 1 is, is my favorite of the two. Uh, the comet that time forgot is super pulpy, old school. Uh, it just feels sword and sorcery. There's, you know, giants and dragons and cavemen and apes and fire and ice. And you're you know, fighting between them on this comet flying through space. There's lizard men. There's a giant turtle on this comet. You know, there's uh, <laughs> there are pyramids in the desert. Uh, cool maps throughout as well. 
and then you get the last page there. Uh, this is the comet, actually, the time forgot. You get, you know, of course, towards the front, it's all hot because it's flying through space and it's heated, and then as you get to the back of it, it's frozen. <laughs> so it's really cool just having that image there of the actual comet. So again, this one, Adventure Anthology 1, I really recommend both of these in physical form because they're so convenient, so great to have. Adventure Anthology 2, beautiful art on the cover, reminiscent of the uh, guys climbing up the statue. There's the Tar Drake, I think, from one of the adventures on the back there. And then you are the Tar Worm. And then once again, you get the same formatting. So the front cover has a map from Barrow of the Bone Blackguards, which is one of the adventures, also one that I really want to run. And then the Shrine of the Oozing Serpent, which is the second adventure. And then you get the Cathedral of the Crimson Death, and then the Ravener's Gat. Ravener's Gat, which is the last of the four adventures in this one. Once again, you get great, great art throughout, beautiful formatting. The colors are just, mostly it's black and white, but there are occasional accents. This one has purple as its accent color throughout with fantastic art there. Um, and then you get the second one, which has this sort of bony color for its accent color. A great piece of full page art there. And then the Cathedral of Crimson Death has sort of a blue, it would have made more sense to make it red, but I, I like the blue too. Blue and greenish is its uh, accent color. And then you get the Ravener's Gat, which has the red as its accent color. And once again, again, if you've seen my reviews on it, then I won't go into too much detail here, but these are all fantastic adventures. Really cool, great to throw into any game or to run as a one-shot. Now they don't connect, There's these are anthologies, so they don't, um, they're not thematically tied together really as far as I can tell. There's no connecting story in between them all. They are all independent, one-off adventures that you could put into any campaign or again run as one-shots. Highly recommend them both. The construction of the books is exactly what you would hope for, exactly what you'd expect from little hardbound books with four adventures each. Highly recommend. Great books. Really good. The next one that I'm going to cover here is, as I said, Crown and Skull Volume 1. This book's quality is absolutely fantastic. So first of all, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's got this textured um, sort of like, I don't know what you could call that. Uh, there's, a, there's a word for it. It's escaping me at the moment. It's going to bother me. I'm sure somebody will, will do it in the comments, but it's great. It's like, yeah, it's very textured vinyl or something. I don't think it's vinyl, but it's uh, very solid. This is a heavy book as well. It's got a nice black ribbon and the art on the cover is great. I didn't expect it to be, um, I, I just didn't expect it to be this, this cool to actually have this in my hand. It makes me, I, I, I've talked about this a couple times before. I don't know if I'm going to run this as a regular game. It, I do want to try it out. I actually haven't tried it out yet, but this book certainly makes me want to read through. Like, I just want to hold on to this thing and read through it. It's a, it's a tome. A weighty tome, and I think that's exactly what Moonhammer likes to wanted to do. So, absolute success there. Um, if you've seen my review on this one, again, I'm not going to go into it too much detail, but the book is beautiful. The accents on the pages, the art section in the middle of the book, the font choices are just delightful. The bits of fiction you get throughout the Leaning Stones, the clarity of the presentation, the ideas, the flavor of the writing, and on and on in terms of my praise of this of this game creativity than how he tries something brand new which we haven't seen a million times although obviously it has connections and touchstones and things it borrows from other games but just a fantastic fantastic book with that art section in the middle with just you, know, you just want to spend some time with these pieces they're so cool so beautiful i talked about that since uh since i reviewed this book, the, I, the fact that all the art is in the center has grown on me because I can go, I know exactly, you know, I mentioned this in the other video that maybe it would be useful because you can know exactly where to go to get all the cool art. That's exactly right. I, I always, I, I know how to get to exactly the pieces that I want and then just to look through the whole thing. Just, it's so good. And all the different styles you get in there. The GM's Guide too is fantastic. This is worth reading just for the ideas you can get there. Really, really great stuff. And then again, if you can see, the spine of the book is that bent. Now it looks like it's not sewn. Um, it's just glued. But it, it, it's great. Absolutely great. Um, I expect this to last for a while. I hope it will last for a while. Um, it doesn't have that stiffness, which... So 
I, I don't want this to... Uh, yeah. I could be totally wrong about that fact that it's lasting. Because it's glued um, and not sewn. Uh, but, you know, who knows? I don't know enough about the composition of books to know what I'm talking about there. So I will leave it to you guys, but uh, hopefully you can see the way it's constructed there. And once again, it's a solid book. The page quality is great. There's not really any bleed through. I like this. I really like this in physical form. I'm glad I have it. Uh, again, I just just because it's it feels weighty and it feels, I don't know, something about it. The embossed back and I don't know what it is. I just love it. So great book. Uh, great construction, very good work from Hanker and Fernail. Uh, the next, as I said, was going to be this Dragon Bane Bestiary. Now this is a Smith uh, Smithstone binding, is that what they call it? Uh, where it's actually bound in the back there. No, it's, it's, it's Free League, so you know it's about the best quality you're going to get in a book. The art is just gorgeous, and it's that same style that reminds me of sort of like an alternate universe D&D, &D. <laughs> uh, or alternate R universe. If this D&D you know, &D had been um, had been in our an alternate dimension, it would look something like this. <laughs> I love the art from it. It's super uh, evocative, really old school and flavorful, but grounded. Even like the Mallards, right, which are the duck men, the duck people, <laughs> they're, they're, they look grounded, they look real in the world when you have pieces of art for them. But the bestiary here is great. So there's a um, great piece of little, little dragon wormling guy there. It's freely. So, you know, you know what you're getting in terms of quality. It's going to be super high quality. And it is, in fact. The art for goblins, incredible. Art for hobgoblins, incredible. Ogres, incredible. I mean, every single creature has a great piece of art for it. Orcs. Look how, look, I mean, okay, look at these orcs now. Those are orcs. Those are orcs. I love it. Uh, and and the, the stat blocks are laid out really well. I like how Dragon Bane does monsters. I think they're really cool. Um, rare kin. This is a different section of the book. This is, you know, stuff that's kind of like, well, cat people, for example, and centaurs. Things that are kind of human-y, demi-human-y, fairies, but aren't actually human -y. frog people. These are mostly presented as monsters rather than as things you could play. But I could see supplemental supplements coming out where you could play these, like lizard people and things like that. Mermaids. Minotaurs. Now the monsters in here, the naiads, such a great piece of art right there. I love that one. Satyrs. Uh, some of the things I... Um, oh, the swan maidens. That's a kind of a cool one too. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the folklore influence is from the swan maiden, but I really like it. The, the monsters in her are generally things that you're going to see in other monster manuals. Tree kin, um, insectoids, ant people. But there are a beetle kin. There are occasionally creatures that are a bit a bit outside the norm. But for the most part, spider folk. You know, you're looking at things that you've seen elsewhere. Trolls, cave trolls, which of course, forest trolls, mountain trolls, giants. Great piece of art there for the giants. Forest giants, mountain giants, sea giants, titans. It's a great piece of art for the titan there. Then you get beasts like a basilisk, the brook horse. Kind of interesting there. Caledons, chimeras, just beautiful pieces. The giant amoeba, the ooze. Beautiful pieces of art for each of these creatures with corresponding stat blocks. I think if you play Dragonbane, you gotta get this. If you don't play Dragonbane, you might still want to get this because of the art and the ideas. Because again, there are adventure seeds for each creature. Just one most of the time, but that's awesome. You get random encounters as well, and how to use them in random encounters. Just overall, fantastic. Fantastic. Really, really fantastic. Hard to beat. <laughs> Hard to beat. And that's just true for most of Free League stuff, right, in terms of their presentation, their quality. I'm, I've, I've, in the past year, I've gone from knowing of Free League and being like, yeah, cool, to being like a hardcore Free Leaguer. Uh, Free Liga. Undead. Ghosts. Just the... Again, 
I, I am a huge fan of handcrafted things and things that look handcrafted. Things that done by hand. Digital art. Things that look like digital. The maybe it was AI. I think it was the AI thing that that really turned me off because I realized that a lot of that art. It just like there was a period of time when a lot of the AI art I was like yeah that just looks like what most people were doing on other things digital art it all looks the same and so you know I'm I'm not a huge fan of AI art I don't I'm not like you know some people who are really really morally opposed to it or anything like that but um, I, I I prefer it I don't prefer it I prefer actually hand drawn art and uh, and hand crafted things and things that look even if they're inferior in terms of execution to things that are done, you know, digitally or just cleanly. Uh, not that these are inferior by any stretch, but they're stylized in a very particular way. They're, they're, they have a particular tone. They're presenting something new rather than generic. Right? Like, even though some of these creatures are generic creatures, goblins, orcs, hobgoblins, giants, um, many of them are generic. Not this presentation of them. Flavorful, whimsical, fairy tale like. It gives you a particular tone for this world or for this game. And uh, I really prefer that to the generic. Hey, I could be in any anything. I could be any fantasy world. I could be any, you know, anyone could have done me. <laughs> or not anyone, but you know, I, I say this as someone who doesn't have any artistic talent. So I, I, I couldn't do a lot of what those digital artists do. It's period. I couldn't do it. But it just, it often really lacks substance. It's just glitzy and flashy and shiny and smooth. And I'm so bored of that art. I love things like this much, much more. So I highly recommend this book. Even again, you don't play Dragon Vein just in terms of its beauty, the beauty of its art. And some of the adventure ideas and hooks are pretty cool too. But I, if you do play Dragon Vein, I think you need this book. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. All right, Dragon Slayer, another dragon <laughs> book. I've already flipped through this in detail, but I just wanted to show you guys the quality of the actual book itself. Again, if you if you have Greg's other books, if you have his, um, you know, Duero Deep or Barrel Maze or something like that, then you know the quality of this book because it's no different. It's thicker, it's heavier, it seems to me, than some of those books. But And you have more full page. Well, I don't know about more. Yeah, I think you have more full page art. There's no bleed, there's no there's no issues, there's no bad formatting, there's no real, I mean, a couple of the pages are kind of wavy, but that doesn't bother me so much. There's no breakage or misprinting, at least in my edition. It's just all good, it all looks great. Very happy with it. Definition of a solid book. Um, it's not the highest quality production in terms of its, it's print on demand. You know what you're getting from Drive Through RPG. You know what you're getting there. Ha, oh, love that. Love that, love that. But if you are content with the quality of, as I am, with the quality of Greg's adventures, that, that the, the print quality of the adventures that you get through drive through RPG, then you'll be content with this. If you have nitpicks with those, or if you prefer you know, different kinds of, of, of binding, if you prefer different kinds of covers, and then, then you might prefer not, you might not prefer this. But it, it is what we have seen in terms of his other books. So it's no, it's no different than that. I like those. I have them all. <laughs> so, so you know, I, this, is, this is mine. This is out of my alley. This is great. I, I totally like it. Um, but we're not looking at something that's like, wow, this is the best bound book I've ever seen. Right? It's nothing like that. Uh, the, the cover is that glossy. But, but again, you're, you're talking, I mean, you're, look at this. You're looking, you're talking about this piece of art. I mean, you could put this on a cardboard you know, little like flimsy sleeve and I would still get it because this art is so dang good. And that's true about most of this book. The quality of the book, you want it to last and I think this book will last. If you're using it every day, you know, ripping it open, pulling it open, taking it around, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna show the wear and tear after a while. It's a print-on-demand book. But if you want a book that is beautiful, that has beautiful art in it, um, well, then you got this. And again, like I said before, I'm not I'm not sure I'm going to be running this all the time, so I think this is going to be pretty safe on my shelf and the amount that I will use it. Um, but it's very hard to go wrong with art like this. 
very hard. So I'm very glad that I have that. Uh, I'm, and I keep saying I'm going to put it on my shelf. I don't really want to put it on my shelf in the sense of like having it just, just the spine visible. I want that to be visible. So I'm, I don't know. I'm going to figure out something where I can see that regularly. This, on the other hand, in terms of well, the the book quality, the contents are amazing, absolutely amazing. The 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 uh, monster overall, but the quality of the book was surprising to me. The quality of the form uh, of the sorry of the actual construction was surprising to me. First of all, it's huge, way bigger than I expected. I mean, you can see what the dragon slayer right next to it. This is a this is a, a normal, you know, Greg. Gillespie uh, book format in terms of its size. Same as Dragon Bane. It's the standard, what is that, 8.5 by 11 or something like that? I think that's the average format, something like that, um, of, of all of most standard books. This is slightly bigger. So that's going to bother some people because it's not going to look, it's not going to line up, you know, even on the shelf next to their other books. It's slightly taller, uh, slightly broader. But, man content of this book and again the construction so you have that binding just sewn you get that you get this very very nice textured uh, it's not textured I, I like the texture on it it's not textured and it's like you, know, you don't feel um, texture but it's kind of that smooth um, I, not entirely smooth I, mean, I don't know how to describe that again I I really have very few words when it comes to texture and construction that's not my area at all um, but I like the way it feels in my hand and it is heavy. This is a heavy book. The, out, the, the cover, the front cover is great, but it's not, you know, this is not a book you're getting for the art. Although the art, the incidental art throughout is good. This is a book you're getting for the content. And I've seen my review on it. I'm not going to go into detail. It's going to be harder to read these pages than it would be in my, in my review. But just the front and back covers are covered with stuff. They're used. Front and back. And then you just get these beautiful large font tables of contents with your introduction, uh, your monster statistics, how they're going to be laid out, tactics of the monster, random encounters, and then of course your actual entries, your barbarian entry with the 100 barbarians, your cultist entry with your generic cult lair, your knight entry with all of your stuff. I mean, you just, this is so good. And the fact that it's big, large font relative to the size of the book, um, you, you've got a great tool to use in your prep. I'm going to put this like right next to my binder and use this all the time. Great piece of art there. And uh, and also at the table. You could run from this book easily if you wanted to run one of the generic layers and reference the pages as needed. Man, this book. I am so glad that I got this physical copy. One of my, one of my uh, subscribers uh, commented that, that he had gotten his physical copy and I was like, whoa, I, I didn't know they had a physical copy. And then I looked around for it and I found it. And I was like, oh my goodness, yep, gotta get that. So, highly recommend this. If you have the, if you don't have, I should say, the monster overhaul, you should get it. Because, even in just in PDF, you should get it. But if you can, get this physical copy because, oh my goodness, highly, highly recommend in terms of construction, excellent. I love the the, the, the sewn binding, or at least I mean, it, it well it looks like it's glued, it curved. I don't know. It it strikes me as the sewn, but I guess it's not because it looks like it's glued there. Oh well. Maybe you maybe I I don't know enough. I don't know enough. I'm gonna have to look into this because I do enough of these that I it would behoove me to know what I'm talking about. All I can say is that I really like it. And I love the heaviness, I love the quality of the pages, uh, I love the content. And I'm very happy that I have a physical copy of this book to put on my, uh, actually not to put on my shelf, to use everywhere. So anyway, that's the stuff I've gotten recently. A lot of really cool stuff, I'm very happy with it. Monster Overhaul, Dragon Bane, Dragon Slayer, Crown and Skull, of course, and then the Adventure Anthologies. Uh, great stuff. Oops. Highly recommend that you guys check these out. Um, and again, if you if you haven't seen my reviews on them, you can check those out too. I have reviews on all everything except the Monster Manual. All right, guys. Hope this has been interesting. I'll see you in another video.